welcome to part two of our integration host getting started series. If you haven't already seen it, head back to part one where we created a CSV file from an HL7 file. If you've already seen part one, welcome back. Let's consider this workflow for a bit. It's made of two activities, the first of which, which receives the data from a file, and the second that builds a new message out of the data and writes it to a file. These are quite big steps that are hiding some of the complexity. Perhaps not a big deal in a simple mapping like this, but what if that data required more processing to convert? What if it needed logical steps like conditions or loops to process the data? This is where the concept of transformers comes in. Clicking an activities transformers tab shows you the transformers window. One way to think of transformers is more of a details focused workflow which runs inside each of the activities just before the data is written performs all the steps required to map from one activity to another. The center panel lists all the steps that will be taken to map the data. You can see here that we already have a small collection of transformers. These are mapping values from the incoming message to the variables that we added to the message previously. As we drop the items into the message template, the system was behind the scenes creating the transformers that bound the fields to the variables for us. Clicking on the transformer shows how the variable named patient ID number had its value set from the PID 2.1 field from the first activity. I could have done this entirely manually too. If I'd click the add transformers button and select the set variable value, it will add another transformer. I'll call this variable sex and then select the source to be the first activity and enter the path as the PID 8. Now I can go back to my activities message template type comma and add in the variable by right clicking and inserting it. The point that I'm trying to make here is that although the workflow designer has helpful shortcuts, it's still just creating logical steps to transform the data. Let's now expand on this with another example that digs a little further, particularly into the transformers. This time we'll spin things around a little bit by constructing the HL7 message as if we have a system that needs to pass our data onto another medical system. I'm going to create a new workflow for this called example2. The plan is to receive our data, process it into HL7, and send it on. There are lots of ways to do this. Commonly a web service receiver is used, either SOAP or REST, due to their ability to respond back to the cooler, notifying them of success or failure. But I'm going to keep things simple and stick with the directory scanner. I will, however, step up the data complexity a bit by including some observation results. CSV won't cut it anymore as I want to bring in hierarchical data, so XML or JSON is a better option for now. You can see it's just the same basic patient data as before, but now includes a list of results for us to loop over and include in the HL7. Note that there are two different devices in the results. We're going to filter out the MED2 results, leaving only the MED1 observations. Firstly, we'll name the activity and configure it to scan an incoming directory. Set the message type and create the message template by pasting in our message. Next, I'll add a new activity and I'll stick with the TCP sender this time. I'm happy with the defaults, noting that I'm sending locally to port 22222. I just need to provide a message template. When you're integrating with other systems, they'll probably have a sample HL7 message for you to paste in here. So I suggest that you use that as your template. I'm going to build my own though. So I'll just start with the same HL7 message from the previous example as my frame. I'm going to get rid of all the segments that I don't need. So I just have the message header and the patient info segments. And now I'm going to change the message type at the MSH9 to be a ORUR01 as I'm sending out data to another system in this example. I'll also set the date of the message to the current date time and format that to the HR7 date format. Plus I'll put in the workflow instance ID system variable to use as the message control ID in the MSH10. I could use the same techniques from the previous example to bring the patient's details, but because I want to loop over the results, we'll do our mapping in the transformers as that'll enable us greater flexibility. You can see here that we now have both the source and destination tree populated with our deconstructed message templates. The destination tree is always the current activity. It's the message that we're manipulating with the transformers. The source tree provides a list of all the places you get data from. You can see that both the first activity and the variables are available to me. But if I had another activity before the current one, querying the database or calling a web service for example, then the results would be listed here too. The general goal of transformers is to map 
data from the source tree to the message of the destination tree. Individual transformers are listed here and their details here. I can simply drag the patient's ID across to the PID2 patient's ID and it creates a new transformer for us. We can then add the others, first name, last name and date of birth. We can even adjust the formatting by right clicking on the binding down here in the details and converting our date of birth to the HR7 date format. So now to loop over our results, it's going to require a for each transformer. So click the add transformers button and select for each. We'll set it to loop over each of the results and we'll create a new OBX segment for each one using the append segment transformer. I can build up the appended segment by typing in the text and adding variables where I have values to display. I'll use the system's for each transformers counter variable as the set ID like so. Now I'll bring in the observation and value and create them into variables too. And I can now insert these into their location within the OBX. I mentioned earlier that we'd be filtering out the MED2 device records. So let's create a condition. And we'll bind that to the device field and set it to only process the MED1 devices. And then put the append segment into the condition so it only executes when the condition is met. If we go back to the activity, we can see that transformers don't alter the message template at design time, but at runtime, it's going to swap out the map values. Values that aren't mapped are just going to be written out as they appear in this message template. So you're going to want to remove any junk data that you don't have mappings or literal values for. I'll save the workflow and we can see in the main screen that the workflow is up and running. Heading over to the file system, I'll copy the example2 sample file into the processing directory and then head back to the client to view the results. Okay, things are going wrong here. That red counter is showing errors. Let's take a look at the logs and see what's going wrong. No connection could be made because the target machine actually refused it on our local address. That's right, we are sending the message on to port 22222, but there isn't anything there to represent that third party. Integration host doesn't give up on this type of error. It assumes your network's gone down and it's just trying over and over to get the message through. No worries, we can just create a TCP receiver workflow to simulate a third party. New workflow, all the defaults are exactly what we need. The port is the same, so all you need to do is hit save and close. And that's fixed it. We can refresh the logs on our example two workflow and see that our messages have been processed correctly now. Looking at the log details on our third party simulator workflow shows the HR7 message with all of its fields correctly bound and with only the MED1 observations listed. Fantastic. Click on the HR7 soup icon to open up the settings dialog and here you can create alerts that will email an administrator if one of these system events happens and you need to configure the email settings and message and, and that's about it. Scheduling enables workflows to be started at specific times of the day and week. For example, we can set our directory scanning workflow to process all the messages at 1am in the morning, reducing the load on the server. When doing this, you should also change the workflow to stop once all the files in the directory have been processed. We have a pile of tutorials on our website to help with all sorts of scenarios and get you up and running quickly and easily. Also take a look at our partner program for great discounts available to resellers. Plus let's not forget our free developer licenses to build and test your integrations. HR7 Soup's integration host will make integrations faster than you ever thought possible. A truly cost effective solution for your integration needs.